Let's go on to a fight that I am so excited about. In the middleweight division, Sean Strickland takes on Alex Pejeda. <coughs> Strickland, uh, uh, no, uh, no stranger to controversy. The always colorful uh, Sean Tarzan Strickland, maybe the most odd nickname in MMA, in, in my opinion. Uh, he is riding a six-fight win streak coming into this Saturday night's pay-per-view, most recently defeating Jack uh, Hermanson. Alex Pejeda, uh, riding a five-fight win streak coming into Saturday night, is 2-0 and in the UFC, coming off of uh, a UD over Bruno Silva, and before that, a spectacular flying knee knockout over uh, Andreas Michalidis. And guys, this is a, a very, very interesting fight. Uh, Pejeda is 5-1 and one as a pro in MMA. Of course, before MMA, he was in kickboxing. Sean Strickland is 25-3 and three overall as a professional. With 10 knockouts, 4 subs. Uh, he's never been submitted himself. He's only been knocked out once. Very interesting fight. Strickland as a middleweight is very durable, very tough guy, very tricky uh, style on the feet. But Pajeda is, uh, he has a world-class pedigree in kickboxing. So, uh, Mark, let me throw it over to you first this time. What is your assessment of Strickland welcoming Pajeda to the upper echelon of middleweight? So, yeah, I love this fight. Great fight. Uh, as we said, you know, on some episodes back, it, I did not expect Pajeda to be in a fight this big this soon, but here we are. And it seems like the winner is probably going to get a title shot uh, unless something odd happens in, the, in a different fight somewhere. Um, <clears throat> the odds are wild because Strickland is not even favored here. Pereira is the favorite at minus 120, and Strickland is plus 100. Uh, so this man is getting a lot of respect. Obviously, uh, you know, newsflash for anyone who doesn't know, he knocked out Israel Adesanya in kickboxing. So, you know, I'm breaking that news for the first time. But, uh, yeah, a lot of respect coming Pereira, Pereira, Pereira's way. I believe he goes by Pereira. Um, but uh, in terms of the fight, I don't know. I, I don't know. I already had one of these with Riddell and Turner. I'm about to have another one on the next fight we're getting to. I don't know. These are they're such good fights on this freaking card. Um, Pereira is going to have three inches in height and four inches in reach which is obviously a factor for a dude who's a striker. Um, but Sean Strickland can grapple. As much as he's known as a striker, Sean Strickland is fully capable of bringing this thing to the mat and negating that reach advantage and the kickboxing skills of Pereira. Um, I'm also curious to see what Pereira's cardio looks like if this thing goes late, especially with the pace that Sean Strickland keeps. There's a lot of variables in this fight, uh, but... To to break it down as simply as I can, I I kind of feel like this is going to depend on how Sean Strickland chooses to fight. If he is going to stand there in exchange, I think Pereira will eventually get the better of him. He's too skilled there. He throws with such accuracy, and there's so much power even in like his small little shots. He just carries such natural power. It's it's wild. But if Strickland is going to wrestle first, strike second, I think he's going to tap Alex Pereira. Uh, Pereira is not exactly a blitz you and kill you kind of guy. So I think Sean is going to get to settle in and I'm going to guess that he chooses to fight smart and ensure a title shot for himself and not fight in a way that he shouldn't be fighting. I'm going to say that he wrestles and that he ends this thing pretty quickly. I will say round two rear naked choke, Sean Strickland. And I know he doesn't have a submission win since 2014, and maybe I'm underrating the grappling of Alex Pereira, who regularly trains with Glover Teixeira, though maybe not lately because Glover probably can't move so well right now. Um, and I know how bad the UFC is hoping Pereira wins this fight so they can set up him and Izzy, but I don't think I'm seeing it. Sean Strickland, round two, rear naked choke. Wow, what a pick. Omar, take it away. You know, I don't hate that pick. The reality is we don't really know what Alex Pereira's game is on the ground. You know, he hasn't really been tested there since he came into the UFC. His first loss in MMA was a rear naked choke. So it's not like it's crazy to say that he's susceptible to being on the ground. Um, with that being said, Sean Strickland is, is an absolute madman. I, I don't know how much logic goes into the decisions he makes inside of the cage. 
he genuinely seems like a guy who likes to get into firefights. Um, he likes, it seems like he likes to be the guy on the firing end, kind of making people miss and being able to talk a lot of shit and this, that, and the other. There's a part of me that thinks that from an ego perspective, he would want to show up Alex Pereira and beat him at his own game, uh, or at least try his best to do so. Um, very possible the moment he gets rocked, that plan goes out the window and to your point mark he probably goes for a takedown and tries to change up the game a little bit once he realizes he may not be able to stand with Pereira but um I just I I may not have the same confidence in his fight IQ to that extent the way that, that Mark does um and it's not to say Strickland isn't a great fighter but I do think that there is a little bit of alpha shit to him and I don't know if it's going to allow him to possibly do what he needs to do to win the fight and take advantage and exploit the areas that that Pereira has, um, and I think he definitely will strike with him longer than he should. I think he will he will open himself to a lot of damage where he probably doesn't need to. Whether that goes on for the entire fight or not, I guess that's really going to be the big question. But I think Pereira starts off hot early. Um, I'm going to go with Pereira by by decision. I think I think he can get two rounds out of there. Oof, that is a factor. I didn't even think of that. That it is a, a three round fight. Yeah. Um man, there's a lot of angles to this fight. It's it's a super interesting fight to to think about and, and to try to make a pick for. One thing that strikes me is the really uh, a drastic difference in experience in MMA. I mean, Pereira obviously is very experienced as a kickboxer, but he's only logged six fights in a cage, whereas Sean Strickland is going into his 29th MMA fight as a pro uh, this weekend. <clears throat> I think that, I don't th- I don't see Strickland grappling. I think Strickland is a crazy man, and he's going to be, he's going to be Sean Strickland cranked up to level 11 against a guy who's as talented and dangerous as Pereira. And I think Strickland's going to have to be. I think he's going to be screaming at him, he's going to be yelling at him in the ring, talking shit, walking him down, with his hands kind of up and down, kind of doing that sort of almost like a modified Philly shell that he kind of does. Oh. Yeah. I I think the, the experience is going to be the factor here, and I, I think Sean Strickland is going to walk away with a, with a three-round unanimous decision. He might find moments where if he gets stung, he might shoot for a double leg and get the fight to the ground and, and end, end a round with the final two minutes of a round. Uh, you know, ground and pounding Alex Pereira. So I think Sean Strickland's going to walk away with the UD. That's yeah. the pick. I think if there's one area to be concerned about for, for Pereira, it's going to be the, the pace, like Mark said. Like, I, there, there's yeah. a real possibility yeah. that, you know, the only way you're going to stop Sean Strickland from coming forward is by hitting him. But I don't know how, min- how long Pereira is going to be able to do that consistently on the back foot. Because that's primarily where I feel like that fight's going to end up being in the beginning of that first round. Um, it's going to be a lot of counter ability or a lot of moments for counters um, for Pereira. Um, I, I would assume, based on his experience, a lot of teeps, a lot of things to try to keep and manage distance. But at some point, like we all know, Sean Strickland's not going to stop coming forward. So Never. can Pereira keep that <clears throat> up for three rounds and continue to hit him to stop him from coming forward? Or at some point, can his body not keep up and eventually gets swallowed up by the second and third round? I, the whole premise, I think, is super interesting. It's a very, very good matchup. I have confidence in Pereira, but the reality is this fight is just too fucking crazy to really know what's going to happen. I mean, it, Sean it wouldn't even, kind of a crazy man. It yeah. wouldn't even shock me if Pereira is the one that's walking forward, to be honest. Yeah. Granted, maybe right. not because he may be afraid of stepping into a takedown, but we'll see. It's a great All right, fight. gentlemen, great yeah. we have made it to the co-main 